lions, tigers, and cows? Oh my, we have the story. A spotlight on a student that is involved with something out of the ordinary. And the impact specific women have had in our world. All of this and more coming up on NHS TV Live. New guidelines from the CDC were announced regarding COVID-19 protocols. The new guidelines state that people who are fully vaccinated can meet with other fully vaccinated people and in small groups of unvaccinated people. You are not considered fully vaccinated until two weeks after both doses of the Moderna and Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines or two weeks past a single dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The CDC still does caution to continue to uphold safety precautions regardless. In the sports world yesterday, the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott agreed to a four-year contract worth $160 million and a guaranteed $128 million. The contract is a no-trade and no-tag clause. This means it is a long-term contract for four years and guarantees Prescott that if the Cowboys try to trade him, he has the ability to say no to specific NFL teams. Prescott has said he wanted to stay and be a Cowboy for life, and it's starting to look like that statement will hold true. In other news, if you didn't already know, this month is Women's History Month, and we are highlighting several women from the past that have had long-lasting impacts on the world as we know it. Amelia Earhart was a renowned woman and pilot. Amelia was born in Kansas and defied traditional gender roles from the beginning. She played basketball and briefly attended college. But during World War I, she served as a Red Cross nurse in Toronto, Canada. That's where she began to spend time watching pilots and the Royal Flying Corps train in the local airfields. One of Amelia's first airplane rides was in California with famed World War I pilot Frank Hawks, and she's had her head in the clouds ever since. The following year, she started flying lessons, and in December of 1921, she earned her flying license. She went on to achieve a number of records, her most notable being the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Which was one of the most severe I have ever been in. Sadly, on her last trip to fly across the world, she would crash and be lost to sea. But we will never forget her efforts and achievements today. A story on a student who is making big moves towards his future. NHS TV reporter Ali Joe Owens has the story. You may know him for his goofy personality, or maybe you've just seen him around school. But what many don't know is that he utilizes the FFA program here on campus to prepare him for his future. Uh, so I show commercial cattle, which is a steer three. I basically have to run it like a feedlot per se. So I have to keep numbers, books, everything that there is that you do at a normal feedlot, I do there. Many students purchase their animals from livestock companies, but Tanner's story is a little different. I took three steers off of my grandparents' ranch in Oklahoma. I brought them down here, fed them out. But during his journey, he has been faced with a big challenge. And then about two weeks ago, one of my steers got his head stuck in a gate. And basically, when cattle get stuck for very long, they're throwing their head around, they can get neck damage, and cows use their heads to get up. So if they can't get up from the neck damage, then they're basically done for, and my cow hasn't yet to get up. We're still holding out hope for him. Along with feeding and watering, he has been having to give some extra TLC to the injured steer. It's like having a toddler, but he weighs 1,500 pounds. Luckily, Tanner still has two other steers and will be able to compete this year in the Houston Livestock Show. All of the meat will be bought by the Houston Livestock Show and then they will slaughter it and then it'll go out just like any other cow, anywhere, everywhere. It's a really cool experience and lucky to be a part of it. Even though Tanner does have to sell them for slaughter, he's made the best out of their experience. I named my first steer Tanner after me. I named my second steer Is, and then I named my third steer Single. Although Tanner is a senior this year and this is his last show season, he plans to take these experiences with him outside of high school. I would like to turn cattle into a career, as most of my family has. 
Well, good luck to you, Tanner. This has been Allie Jo Owens with NHS TV. The meat from my steers will wind up on your dinner plate. Seven and a half miles away at Lakeview Elementary, students got the chance to read around a campfire. The school entrance and flex space was transformed into a camp read-a-lot. This school-wide activity allowed kids to find a quiet place and read under the stars. And while they aren't real stars, students were still able to calm down and just read. The kids also participated in Dress Like a Camper Day, so they looked exactly like they were camping. Some of the students were also found reading with flashlights, taking the role above and beyond. If you are looking for some advanced courses for next year to boost your GPA, but will also give you hands-on experience while learning, AP Environmental Science might be for you. AP Environmental is a year-long class. We get the chance to study biology and chemistry and a little bit of physics in the fall semester. We start out with ecology and we go into population ecology and we study some population, human population. And in the spring, we start talking about agriculture and mining and urbanization and water and air pollution throughout the spring semester. It's also a lot of hands-on learning. So if you learn better that way, it's a good course to take because you get hands-on experience and you're not only listening to what the course and content is, you're also learning how to apply it to your everyday life and how it applies in the world around you. Students even get to go on field trips at different points during the year to advance their learning process. In the fall, students can go to the zoo to learn about endangered species, and in the spring, students can go to a nearby wastewater treatment plant. If you are interested in taking the APES class next year, be sure and talk to your counselor about next year's schedule. That is a great class to look into, and I love Coach Comfer, so I'm a little biased. Now Texans, applications are now open for Mr. Texan. Ms. Reyes is in charge of Mr. Texan this year and the applications are now available. Just enter the link below if you would like to participate. They are open to any senior guy and the application deadline is tomorrow, March 10th. The application can also be accessed from the Class of 2021 webpage that you can access from the NHS homepage. I'm super excited for Mr. Texan this year. Yeah, me too. I've never actually been to one, so I have no idea like I've what happens. So I'm excited to see what And I'm sad we didn't do it last be. year. I, I wanted yeah. to see who was going to win. Mm -hmm. Well, anyways, we want to congratulate our student council for winning the Outstanding Student Council Award and sweepstakes for the fourth year in a row. That's right. Only 10% of student council gets this award. What an amazing accomplishment. They also won corresponding secretary, which means they have earned a place on the executive board for the governing board of all DFW schools. Congratulations, Suko. We're yeah, really proud of I you. I think that's really great. Well, Texans, make it a great day. This has been NHS TV Live.